All right, so here's the recording for your polynomial functions. This should hopefully help you with today's lesson that you're working on, and we'll see how it goes from there. I want you to evaluate polynomials and determine end behaviors of polynomial graphs. So, what we want to be able to do here is, is first off, understand what a polynomial is. Well, polynomials are just multiple terms, numbers and letters put together that, <clears throat> for, oh, my cat just wants to stand up, that for lack of a better way of putting it, um, well, they're just together. I mean, it's just what you see right there in front of you. Numbers, letters, put together with exponents and stuff like that. So there we go. This one specifically is a polynomial of a single variable because there's only one variable involved, and that would be x in this case. Yeah, just kind of a common thing there. So there we go with that. Now, <clears throat> when you're looking at a polynomial, if you want to know what will determine the most things about its uh, graph or uh, how it will behave, you look at the, the leading coefficient and the degree of the polynomial. That would be basically, oh, hold up, I'll stop there. Basically, which the highest exponent and the uh, number that's in front, the coefficient that would be the number that would be in front of that variable that has the highest exponent. Now, keep in mind here, this should always be written in standard form, which means it's going in order from greatest to least. When you do that, then you can easily identify the leading coefficient and you can easily identify the degree of the polynomial. You just got to look at the uh, the numbers there. But remember, it's always in order from greatest to least. So kind of make sure you pay attention to that. So going back to this, here is some examples of some different types of graphs of these. Now keep in mind, x squared, x to the fourth, x cubed, x to the fifth. You can see between the x, the, the even ones, they both go in the same direction. Okay, and the odd ones go in different directions. So this is what I mean by like based on the um, the lead exponent, or the, I'm sorry, the degree of the polynomial. This would decide how uh, a graph would behave, because <clears throat> I don't care if like I was looking at something that said x to the fifth plus x to the fourth, or like say x to the fifth plus a thousand x to the fourth, it would still have that general x to the fifth shape. Maybe with a little bit some more turns that you could see, but it would still have that kind of shape for the most part. So there that would be that's kind of, that's what I mean by that. So keep in mind that these are general shapes and that's what they're going to kind of do. And and notice that with a negative it switches the direction of basically the thing. So even ones would face down when they're negative but uh, face face up when they're positive. Okay, dokie. So let's see what we got next. All right. So what is the lead term here? What is the uh, what is the uh, degree of the polynomial here? And as I said before, and as you might remember, and if you can hear the purring, that's the cat deciding to go to purr now. Anyways, uh, <clears throat> so what is the lead term? Well, good grief! A lot of y'all, when I first showed you this problem, you were telling me three and four, not paying attention that there is a higher exponent put it in order, and then all of a sudden you tell me, oh, hey, it's negative 4, and hey, it's positive 8, or the degree of the polynomial is 8. Um, I don't, you should actually never have a negative degree for a polynomial. These should always be positive, polyno uh, positive exponents. Okay, <clears throat> Notice the negative 4, it, since that is negative, this graph should face down. I am doing a lot of erasing and doing whatever. Um, but this graph would face down, so I would get something like that bottom one there more so than that top one, okay? Um, and again, this could be fat, but there in this little area, it could also take some twists and turns to several times or whatever to make that little thing. That was probably the worst way to write that. Anyways, next part. Okay, so what you're concerned with here is this right here, this degree of this quintic function. <laughs> And you can kind of see how that works right there and go from there. Um, notice how the odd degrees go in opposite directions and the even degrees are going in the same direction. And that's pretty much it. Pause me if you need to like copy these down, but you don't need them so much as you need this chart. This chart you need. This chart you want. This chart, pause me, copy. 
I shall wait for a little bit for while you pause me. All right, so now I'm unpaused, right? Ah, okay. <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> so you copy this chart. It's very helpful. How does it help? Because it helps in this way. If you take a problem and you look at the graph, okay, so I'm doing number 20 here for this one, okay? Notice how I have part A written. Describe the end behavior. You should always have it already written like that. This is what I want to see. F of x, arrow, as x, arrow, negative infinity, f of x. What that says is basically where is the graph going? So as x goes to the left, the graph goes to down to negative infinity. As x goes to the right, the graph goes to negative infinity. So basically, that's what you're doing there. You're just telling me where it goes, positive or negative infinity. You only have two possible answers per blank. Okay. Then you can tell me, because they both go in the same direction, it's even. And then you could tell me from there that you can count how many times you cross the x-axis and tell me how many real zeros. <clears throat> we won't worry about what degree it actually is or anything like that, so just kind of keep that in mind. You look at 21, same thing. As x approaches negative infinity, as x approaches the left, it goes to positive infinity. As x approaches the right, it goes down to negative infinity. Since they're going in different directions, that's an odd, and you can count that there are three real zeros. Very simple, right? Okay, so if I were to do number 19, I'll just demonstrate there. Do, 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 do. Let's erase that. And then what we could say again, where is x going to? As we go to the left, it's going to negative infinity. And as we go to the right, it's going to positive infinity. And there you go. Uh, so that means it has to be odd. And again, this one actually only has one real zero because it's linear. That one's kind of easy. Now it won't be that nice. Anyways, so there you go. There's that right there. The other thing I want you to be able to make sure you understand for today's assignment is that you got to make sure you put the number like you're going to evaluate. So what does it mean again when I put, like say, find f of 3 or f of 2? It means put this 3. Notice how it's in place of the x in the parentheses. So put the 3 in place of every x. And then just find the answer. This should be the only part you would need a calculator for, so it should be fairly simple. If you want to remember how to type in the exponent, remember, press this button. It's called a caret key. It's next to the x squared button. Like you would say 7, parentheses 3, close it, press this. You get a little space here. You can type in the 5. Then you go back down to type in the rest of the stuff and go from there. Once you're done, you press enter, and boom, there's the answer. So easy, right? All right, so that's it for today. Good luck, and if you need anything, just let me know. If you have any questions, post it on Google Classroom, and I will do my best to answer them. Thank you so much.